The only thing complaining ever does is convince people that you are not in control. The worst person to be around is someone who is always continually complaining about everything and appreciates nothing. Does that not sum up perfectly the current crop of liberal progressive Democrats in Washington, D.C.? You wouldn't think it was their guy sitting in the chair, would you? They always have something to complain about. In today's video, I'm going to tie together two articles in the mainstream media that most wouldn't see as related. It's going to prove that the Democrats really aren't in control and that liberalism is a mental disorder. In the lower right, Maya Angelou once said, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude about it, but don't complain. One of the big complaints against the state of Florida over the last year was the way that we handled the pandemic. But be reminded, if the roles had been reversed and it was younger people, or women or minorities, who were more likely to die, the older folks in our communities would have done absolutely anything and everything to protect us, would they not? A lot of people don't think about it in those terms. Now, what are the two articles that I referenced? Well, one is from CNN and one is from Fox. I've made allegation a long time ago that they were both run by liberals, and you can tell that here. The article on the left, Republican governors are refusing aid from Democrats in Washington. Article on the right, water crisis couldn't be worse on Oregon-California border. Now, many would say, wait a minute. Those two things are completely unrelated. They're directly related. We just have to read into the details. Democrats in Washington have approved trillions of dollars to help Americans weather the coronavirus pandemic, but Republican state officials are pulling back relief for low-income Americans by turning away federal money. In a little more than a week, 17 governors have announced they'll be cutting off pandemic un unemployment benefits early, the latest being West Virginia on Friday. This could cost nearly 2 million people as much as $10.8 billion in payments. Now, what's the reason for this? Well, the Republican governors want people to get back to work. They want people to get off these benefits and stop being dilatory and start being productive again. But you see, D.C. doesn't want that. Now, what's the argument over here being made by CNN why this is a bad idea? More than 300 people responded to CNN's request, asking whether they are at risk of losing their benefits early. Some said they could not find jobs that pay close to what they used to make or that are in their fields. Others said the available positions require licenses and training that they don't have. And still others said that they were still caring for their young children or have vulnerable family members. Now, if you were driven by your emotions reading this, you'd go, oh, those horrible Republican governors. What the question people don't ask over here is, okay, instead of just sending the checks to the people to sit at home and do nothing, why don't they reimburse, for example, those caring for the young children? That's a job. They could take the money instead of just giving it to you to sit home. They could say, okay, we're going to offset the child care with that money. Same thing with the vulnerable family members. They could pay for the required licenses or training. Someone says, I would love to have a job, but I don't have the licenses or training. The government could take that money, those billions and billions of dollars, and say, okay, go take the training necessary. We'll pay for the whole thing. We'll pay for the whole tab. And we'll even work out something with your uh, future employer. They used to do this for trucking all the time. Trucking companies would get with trucking driver training places and they would work out these deals where they would put you up in a hotel, they would pay for your costs and you would take the training and it wouldn't affect your life that much. I mean, you'd have to set aside some time to go do it, but then you got your CDL, you got your driver's training and you got a job and you would have to sign on for a certain amount of time, of course. So that there was 
you know, something in it for the employer to do that. But a lot of trucking companies did that. You could do that with many, many other things. The governors that have ended this are outlined here on the right. Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina. Florida's already done it. I believe Texas has already done it too. And the most recent one they said was West Virginia. So as you can see, this is why CNN is covering this. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are scratching their heads. Okay, we get that, McKee. That makes sense. But what does that have to do with the water crisis in Oregon and California? Well, there's an interesting blurb in this article that talks about this drought going on in California. How they've decided that they're not going to uh, release water from the lake, Upper Klamath Lake. And it's going to cause a die-off of fish and all this kind of stuff. But when you read down all the way at the bottom, it shows something. Now, everybody knows that California and Oregon and Washington State are all completely run by liberals. It talks about a bucket brigade that people volunteered to do to offset this. As you scroll down here, this water crisis made the rural farming region hundreds of miles from any major city a national political flashpoint and became a touchstone for the evil Republicans who used the crisis to take aim at the Endangered Species Act with one GOP lawmaker calling the irrigation shutoff a quote-unquote poster child for why changes were needed. A bucket brigade protest attracted 15,000 people who scooped water from the Klamath River and passed it hand over hand to a parched irrigation canal. Wait a minute. That sounds like work, and they did it for free. That sounds an awful lot like work, and they did it for free. Now imagine the jobs that could be created one that would require no training, no work whatsoever, you can set up 15,000 people. What if it was 150,000 people and bucket brigades? What if it was truck drivers that were driving tanker trucks full of water from places in the country where there wasn't a water shortage and dumping it and pumping it into those canals? You see, that's the thing people don't see is that if the government wanted to, it could incentivize work in a way even that goes along with liberal, quote-unquote, priorities, meaning, you know, the environment. People could go back to work, but you see, they can't have that. Because people going back to work, what does that do? That gives people a sense of hope. That gives people a sense of identity. That gives people a sense of confidence and a sense of the world being right because work is inherently good for people. There's a sense of honor that comes with it. There's a sense of well-being that comes with it. A lot of people have said hard work is its own reward in many ways. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the region, what they're talking about up here, Let's see if I can find it. This is the upper Klamath Lake right here. And they have dug all sorts of canals to create all of this farmland down in here. Well, because of the drought, they're not releasing water. There's also farmland over here, all largely created by canals that somebody was employed to create. But we live in the modern world. If we need to bring fresh water somewhere, we can bring fresh water somewhere. If a 15,000-man bucket brigade can make a difference, imagine what trained tanker truck drivers. Isn't there some story out there now also, if I'm not mistaken, about there was a threat of gas prices being higher this summer before the whole issue with Colonial Pipeline because there was a, a dearth of 
tanker truck qualified drivers. Now, hauling gasoline is very different than hauling water. Not only do you need a tanker truck endorsement, you need a hazmat endorsement. Now, and that's just another test. It's another written test to get. Because the uh, the driving part of dealing with hauling fluids is much the same, whether the fluid is gasoline or milk or water or oil or whatever else it is. You know, you have to drive your truck a little bit differently and stop slower so that they don't slosh. Now, they have baffles in them to largely stop that, but um, the point is this. There could be problems being fixed. There are people that, if they need training, training could be taken care of by the government. If it's an issue with their life, where they have child care costs or they have some other cost, that could all be being dealt with. But instead, the liberal progressive Democrats would rather just write a check so that People vote for them. You see, they don't want to solve problems in our country. As much as they would like to make you believe that they want to protect the environment and they want to uh, be on the side of the working man with all this infrastructure nonsense, all they're doing is buying votes. That's it. Because they know they're in trouble. They know they are in trouble. That's why they have had a full court press against the governor of Florida. Just showing his image in this video is more than likely going to get it shadow banned. Just a picture of in the kind of upper center, the state of Florida will likely get the video shadow banned. That's how much Californians hate Floridians. And that's just the reality. So this is why I say vote with your money, vote with your feet. If you're in these states these liberal Democrat states, you're being abused in the sense that your money, your tax revenue, your presence is being used against you. It's being used to foster things that are not in line with your values. And especially out West, you're not going to change anything. They've pretty much codified the idea that Republicans can never have power. It's literally written into their, their laws now the way they do things. There's no chance of conservatives ever having any level of appreciable power in those states. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to cover today. That's what I want to show you guys is that there's two stories that are directly related. People being paid not to work on one hand and a need for jobs in another place that could be fixed. And I'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. Have a great weekend.